A beautiful blonde girl wakes up thinking about how wonderful it is this morning. However, the next moment the heroine's facial expression changes as she hears some strange sounds next to her. The girl turns over to the other side of the bed where that sound came from. Next to the fair-haired woman is a well-built man with silver hair. The heroine is frightened by this turn of events, since the guy lying next to her is completely unfamiliar to her. A week ago, the girl was quietly enjoying a cup of tea until her fiancé suggested breaking off the engagement. The man apologizes to the blonde, calling her Penelope. Penelope humbly agrees to Count Gordon's proposal. The Count says that two years have passed since their engagement, and he believes that his bride does not love him. Blonde hesitantly says she loves her fiancé. The heroine decides to ask the man if he loves her. Awkwardly rubbing the edges of the cup, Gordon says that he loved the girl, but because of her attitude towards him, now he wants to love someone else. Penelope looks away disinterestedly and wishes the Count happiness in the future. The man gets up from the table and bows to his now ex-bride, saying that he is leaving first. The fair-haired girl looks in bewilderment at the departing Count. Finally, when the groom leaves, the girl makes a face and is indignant that, since he wanted to break off the engagement, then why did he talk so much? Penelope Eliana Zakalian is the daughter of the legendary Baron Zakalian. The heroine's secret is that she remembers her previous life, in which she was a grandmother with a bad mouth. The blonde tried her best to live as a girl of noble blood, but her past personality was making itself felt. As soon as the Baron's daughter met people, she always tried to run away, because when she opened her mouth, curses began to pour out of it. Penelope reflects that living alone is much better. A week after these events, the Elise Ball is held in the state of Labata. On it, people whisper about the cancellation of the blonde's engagement and that her ex-fiancé has already entered into a new engagement with the debutante. One of the guests discusses with others that the Baron's daughter can be introduced to her uncle, who has a child. The others begin to laugh sarcastically at such a proposal. Penelope is angry at the girl's words and hopes that they will get what they deserve for them. The heroine remembers the groom's words that he wants to love someone else, and she is indignant at how he could do this in just a week. The girl decides to wash down her grief with glasses filled with sparkling wine. A masked man with silver hair is watching this from the side. Drunk Penelope goes out onto the balcony to get some fresh air. Fixing her gaze on the sky, the fair-haired woman remembers what her fiancé once was like. Then, two years ago, he, blushing heavily and awkwardly pressing his hat to his chest, proposed to the main character. Penelope thought he was a rather nice young man, so she agreed. Gordon was very happy with the girl's positive response and said he would appreciate it. Remembering that day, the blonde woman begins to get angry with her groom. Leaning on the handrail of the balcony balustrade, the heroine screams into the distance why the man asked her to marry him. After this, the girl feels relief in her soul and finally calms down. The blonde girl's head begins to spin from the large amount of alcohol she recently drank. Her legs give way and Penelope falls. However, the girl's body does not touch the ground as someone's hands catch her. A stranger with silver hair, who had recently been watching the heroine in the hall, saves the Baron's daughter from falling. The silver-haired one says that the blonde-haired one has an unusual way of communicating. Penelope looks at the savior with awkwardness in her eyes. However, the man's face gradually begins to plunge into darkness. Without the strength to fight, the girl goes into the arms of Morpheus. The stranger's violet eyes look carefully at the sleeping heroine. The action returns to the present and the heroine grabs her head, trying to remember what happened at night. But this does not give any results. Penelope's eyes fill with confidence, and she decides that the best solution is to quickly leave the room. The blonde climbs off the bed and tries to tiptoe out of the room, but the girl's leg clings to the hem of her skirt. Penelope looks behind her with apprehension, fearing that she has awakened the stranger. The heroine looks at the guy, unable to take her eyes off his perfect body. The blonde woman thinks that the man doesn't look like a bad person. Leaving the room, Penelope decides to think it over again a little later. The man wakes up and sees that he is alone. The silver-haired man grins because no one has ever dared to run away from him. Looking at the place where the Baron's daughter lay, the guy ponders whether he should reward or punish the fugitive. The girl returns to her house and lies down on the bed. Looking at the ceiling, the blonde woman wonders if the stranger has woken up. The image of a handsome man pops up in her thoughts, but she waves her arms and hands in the air to drive away thoughts of him. In the doorway, this picture is observed by the brother of the main character, Pharion, who looks mockingly at his sister. 
The young man says in surprise that the rumors were true. Penelope furrows her eyebrows and asks her brother what they are talking about. Farian covers his mouth and says with tears in his eyes that his little sister is distraught over the loss of her loved one. The young man calls the heroine Pepe and says that he will not leave her, even though she does not know how to communicate with people and is not the least bit attractive. The blonde girl is annoyed by her brother's words and she throws pillows at him, demanding that he leave quickly. The elder easily dodges every attack of the heroine, teasing her that he will not leave. Then Penelope takes the weapon into her own hands and rushes towards the young man with a scream. Farian runs out of the room and hides behind the door, laughing at his sister, who triumphantly returns to the bed and decides to go meet her friend. The blonde man looks at the girl, saying that today she looks much more cheerful and energetic than usual. The red-haired woman puts down her cup of tea with a loud sound, wondering how anyone can get married a week after a breakup. To this, Penelope calmly replies that she is fine. The eldest daughter of Count Bayman, and the only friend of the heroine, Rubia, is angry at the girl's calmness. Rubia says that everything is clear with the man, but she decides to find out another thing, namely where her friend was last night. Pepe chokes on his tea in surprise at this question. Stuttering, the blonde says that she was at home and asleep in her bed. However, the red-haired woman says that it was Farian in the library who told her about Penelope's absence from home. The girl sighs, remembering the young man because she has been in love with him for five years. The main character remembers how her brother behaves in front of her and does not understand how one can have such feelings for him. Ruby repeatedly and more insistently asks her friend where she was last night. Blonde says she was at a friend's house. The Count's eldest daughter looks at the girl in bewilderment, asking who this person is because she is her only friend. Penelope decides to come clean and says that she drank too much last night and woke up in the same bed with a man she doesn't know. Rubia shouts indignantly that some impudent person dared to take advantage of the heroine. The Count's daughter covers the red-haired woman's mouth with her hand and looks around, fearing rumors. The girl clenches her hand into a fist and asks her friend to be quieter. Ruby asks what the guy was like, to which she receives the answer that he was very handsome with an athletic figure and tall. Count Bayman's eldest daughter grins and asks to tell her a little more about that stranger. Penelope thinks about it and remembers that he had silver hair and didn't look older than 20. The red-haired girl shudders at the heroine's words, remembering something. However, Ruby immediately tries to push away these thoughts, saying that this cannot be who she is thinking about. Seeing the girl's reaction, the daughter of Count Zakalian asks her to tell her what she is thinking about. Rubia approaches Penelope's ear and tells her her guess about the stranger. The heroine's mouth opens in surprise, as her friend named her one of the most honorable titles in the state, namely Emperor. A man pulls a bowstring and aims an arrow burning with a blue flame at a certain place. The man's gaze is concentrated, but the image of one fair-haired girl is still stuck in his thoughts, which he now cannot forget. Due to the fact that the silver-haired man became too absorbed in himself, his arrow escapes from the socket. As a result, the man misses, missing the target. The arrow hits a dome that specially protects against such cases. Someone behind the guy's back addresses him as His Majesty. It turns out that Duke Oliver Damien, who is the Chancellor of Vat, approached him. The Chancellor smiles and says that the Emperor's actions have seemed strange to him lately, because His Majesty attended the ball for the first time and returned from it only the next day. Oliver decides to ask him directly if this has anything to do with that same lady. The Emperor looks at the Duke menacingly and asks if he has anything against this. Chancellor Vada politely looks at the man and claims that this is not so, and he himself understands that he is quite carried away by the girl. Oliver says that he only expressed concern about the future of the silver-haired man because for the first time in ten years after the end of the war, he became interested in a woman. The emperor says that the fair-haired one is unique and unlike anyone else. The duke spreads his hands and clarifies whether he is going to send Baron Zakalian a marriage proposal. His majesty says that he will do this only as a last resort, for now he is going to win her heart. The man is going to slowly, step by step, get closer to the heroine, so that she no longer has the thought of escaping. After these thoughts, the silver-haired man releases the arrow and hits the target. The emperor finishes his training and the duke asks where he is going now. His majesty says he plans to go to the city to inspect it. Oliver understands that the man is going to see that lady, but does not say it out loud and wishes him a happy journey. 
Looking after the departing silver-haired man, the Chancellor thinks that the appearance of his beloved is wonderful. However, this calm of the Imperial Palace resembles the calm before the storm. Penelope arrived at a clothing boutique in the city center. Sitting there, at some point, the girl gets a shiver and gets goosebumps all over. Noticing how the heroine flinched, Ruby turns to her and asks if she's okay. Pepe frowns and says she has a bad feeling. The red-haired girl looks at the girl with concern and says that she probably imagined it. The daughter of Count Bayman suggests not to pay attention to this and asks how she looks in the new dress. The blonde one approves of Rubia's outfit and says she looks great. The friend is happy to hear the praise and decides to try on another one. Penelope smiles sweetly at her friend's reaction and sits down to wait for her again. A girl in a large hat with pink hair approaches the main character, covering half of her face with an elegant fan. Behind the pink-haired woman is Pepe's ex-fiancé, Count Gordon. The Count's daughter stands up to greet them, and now understands why she had a bad feeling. A girl with a big hat carefully examines the heroine. The pink-haired girl tells Penelope that at this age only exquisite clothes can save her, because she is only five years younger than her aunt. Blonde grins at the words of the boutique guest who has just entered. Pepe chuckles at the girl and says that this may seem surprising, but the Count protected her for two years like the apple of his eye. The pink-haired girl is angry that her rival emphasized in her speech that they had been close for two whole years. Penelope continues, saying that her fiancé was very sad that their feelings were not reciprocated because she originally agreed to the engagement, hoping that she would love him. These words really hurt Gordon, and he twists his face. The heroine says that her heart was worried, but now she is calm because the man has met a person who loves him very much. The boutique's visitors begin to whisper behind the hero's backs. An old woman enters the building, but they try to stop her, saying that she can't come here. The pink-haired girl shouts that everything said is pure lies. An old woman approaches the girl and, turning to her, tries to ask for something. However, the woman is disgustedly pushed away by the lady, harshly telling her not to touch her with her dirty hands. Penelope flinches at the actions of the girl with the big hat. Blonde remembers himself from the past in the old woman's face. The heroine approaches the woman and asks if she is okay. Pepe turns to the staff, asking them to take the victim to a quieter place. The lady screams for a new dress because she doesn't want to catch anything from the old woman. Blonde frowns at her rival's words and says that dirt is only in her essence. Hearing such an insult, the pink-haired girl turns around with an angry expression on her face. Rubia comes out of the fitting room, asking what happened while she was gone. At this moment, Penelope gives a strong slap in the face of the girl with the big hat. All people are shocked by the heroine's actions. The fair-haired woman says that upper-class people have no right to offend the elderly and weak. Pepe reminds her that it is only thanks to the luck of fate that the pink-haired girl has the status of a noble lady. The main character tells the girl not to confuse luck with privilege. The lady is seething with anger because of the blow and her rival's accusations. The pink-haired girl screams that the daughter of some baron has no right to touch her. Penelope is only now realizing that she has gotten herself into trouble again. Count Gordon approaches the girl and asks her to calm down as people are watching. The men turn their gaze to the ex-fiancé and say that he expects an apology from her. Seeing Gordon's cold gaze, memories of two years ago flash through the heroine's thoughts, causing her to shudder. The pink-haired girl laughs, saying that she does not need an apology, since the parents will bear responsibility for the actions of their child. Pepe gets tensed after hearing the lady's words about her parents. Gordon tries to convince the girl, saying that even he hasn't seen them for a long time, but she is not going to give up her words. However, the pink-haired girl will take pity if Penelope kneels down and asks for forgiveness. Rubidia and her friend stand in shock at their rival's words. The lady with a grin shows what the blonde must say in order to be forgiven. Pepe looks at the old woman and realizes that she does not repent at all of what she did. Fixing her gaze on the pink-haired girl, the heroine is thinking about something. The daughter of Baron Zakalian begins to crouch and thinks that her parents may be humiliated because of her. The red-haired girl asks her friend not to do this. The lady chuckles and asks the Count what would happen to his position if he married this girl. Looking at the floor, Penelope tries to convince herself that she just needs to be patient a little, and then everything will be resolved. Someone behind the heroine tells her to stand up. The stranger's arms grab the blonde and lift her from her knees. Pepe turns around and sees a man with blue eyes and black hair. The pink-haired girl is indignant that the stranger interrupted such a spectacle. 
The man asks what gives the lady the right to treat Penelope so tactlessly. The black-haired man puts his arm around the heroine's shoulders and tells everyone to remember that she is the bride of His Majesty the Emperor. All the people in the boutique's mouths open at what they hear. The Baron's daughter, like the others, experiences great surprise. The girl begins to worry that these rumors will reach the ears of the Emperor. The lady shouts that this is complete nonsense and they have no right to interfere with His Majesty. The man looks menacingly at the pink-haired woman, asking if she doubts the Emperor's decision. The girl shudders from this icy gaze. Gordon asks his lady to calm down and suggests leaving here. As the ex-groom and his new bride leave, the blonde tries to start a conversation with the savior. The black-haired man gets closer to Pepe's face, causing her to flinch. The man whispers in the heroine's ear, asking if she thought that if she ran away, he wouldn't be able to find her. Penelope's eyes widen and she looks at the man in shock. The emperor smiles and offers to discuss the details over a cup of tea. The main character is in the beast's lair, and at this moment remembers how her only friend wished her luck, deciding not to interfere. The blonde girl begins to wonder who this man is because that guy had silver hair. Now the girl thinks that that night she was not only with him. The black-haired man puts down the cup and begins a conversation, saying that when the heroine ran away from him, he was still thinking about what to do. Looking carefully at the runaway, the man warns her that he had two options, either praise or punish. At these words, the blonde girl swallows the lump in her throat. Penelope awkwardly admits that she doesn't know the savior and that she would like to say something. However, the girl is interrupted by a stranger who says that she can call him Bat. From Bata's sweet smile, the fair-haired heart begins to beat quickly, and she herself thanks for saving her. However, after words of gratitude, the heroine says that that night was a mistake. Pepe suggests forgetting about that day, because she has neither the strength nor the desire to continue talking about it. However, the man warns that he is not going to pretend that nothing happened. Bath says he wasn't joking when he talked about the engagement. Therefore, the black-haired man asks Penelope not to run away anymore. After these words, the man turns around and begins to leave, saying that they will see each other again. The girl asks Bath to stay, but he doesn't stop and leaves. The man exits the portal, returning to his estate. The emperor recalls how the fair-haired woman defended the rights of the poor old woman. His highness touches his hair with his hand, and it begins to turn into his natural color. The man smiles and says that his eyes were not deceiving about the girl. Penelope sits under a tree on the grass and sighs heavily. The whole conversation with Bath flashes through the girl's thoughts again. The heroine thinks that now she would happily fall through the ground. Farion approaches the same tree where his sister is sitting and leans on it, asking why she sighs so much. Pepe says that there are reasons for this, and asks his brother what he is doing here. The guy sits down with the blonde and says that he ran away because Rubia said she would come soon. Farion turns his gaze to his sister, and asks her why she does not react to his words. The girl presses her knees to her chest, and says with sadness in her voice that she now understands his reluctance to see Ruby. Goosebumps run all over the young man's body, and he asks if Pepe ate something spoiled. However, the next moment, one smart thought comes to Farian. The guy moves closer to his sister and pushes her on the shoulder, asking with a smile if she has a fan. Penelope remembers how Bath asked him to call him that with a sweet smile. The blonde brushes off her brother's words, saying that he is talking complete nonsense. The young man spreads his hands and says that there is nothing shameful in this, because everyone in their family was born with a good appearance. The girl's cheeks turn pink from embarrassment, and she tries to cover them with her palms. Farian decides to drop this topic and says that a letter has arrived addressed to his sister from the wife of the Marquis of Montaigne. The guy clarifies that the Marquise is the aunt of the wife of Count Gordon. The image that immediately comes to Pepe's mind is the pink-haired one from the clothing boutique. From the memories, the heroine feels only irritation and anger, which is why she rises from the ground. The fair-haired woman, in an orderly tone, asks her brother to give her a letter. The young man holds out his hand with the envelope, but warns that the invitation does not inspire confidence in him. Squeezing the paper, the girl says that this is why she needs to go to the event. The heroine and Farian come to the estate of the family of the Marquis of Montaigne. Seeing that his sister is alarmed by being in this place, the young man tells him not to worry, because she is under his protection. Looking at the graceful back of some girl, the guy thinks that this lady is his type. However, feeling someone's gaze on her, the red-haired woman turns around. 
The young man looks at the girl in shock, realizing that he was now thinking about Rubia in love terms. Ruby begins to walk menacingly towards Farian. The guy panics and begins to run away from the girl, simultaneously apologizing to his sister for his escape. Pepe remembers the words of her brother who just left that she is under his protection and she has nothing to worry about. The blonde girl glances at the people, realizing that they are whispering behind her back while looking at her. The pink-haired woman and her retinue approach Penelope and greet her. However, after this, the girl grins and says whether she should now address the heroine as the future empress. All those gathered in the hall direct their interested glances at the pink-haired girl. Count Gordon's new lover informs everyone present that Baron Zakalian's daughter is engaged to His Majesty the Emperor. Penelope's eyes widen and she now understands what her rival was planning all along. The pink-haired girl covers her face with a fan and asks the blonde-haired one if she deceived them. Guests of the event begin to whisper around Pepe, saying that after the break of engagement, she went crazy. The girl with the fan grins and says that you can expect anything from the heroine since she hit her. Now the invitees are discussing how the daughter of a simple baron dared to hit the countess. Despair appears in Penelope's eyes when she hears from someone in the crowd that it is now clear why her fiancé left her. The main character again remembers her past life as an old woman, since in it all the people turned against her. Out of resentment, the blonde girl directs her gaze to the floor. Bitter tears begin to accumulate in the girl's eyes. However, at this moment, His Majesty the Emperor arrives at the event. The man hurriedly walks through the crowd of gathered guests. The silver-haired man approaches Penelope and peers into her low-looking eyes. The Emperor approaches the heroine and gently puts his arm around her shoulders. Pepe looks at the man and realizes that he is the one with whom she spent the night, but she also remembers that this man is most likely the emperor. Seeing his majesty, the pink-haired girl curtsies. Silver-haired approaches Penelope's ear and says that he will deal with it. The man turns to the countess, asking if she brought his beloved to such a state. The emperor informs all guests that the daughter of Baron Zakalian is the future empress of Labata. His majesty declares that henceforth there will be no forgiveness for anyone who disrespects his bride. Penelope is shocked by the man's words, like everyone else gathered. The silver-haired man turns to the girl and asks her what she wants to do now. Pepe raises her thoughtful gaze to the emperor and reflects that she did not want to inflate this situation so much. However, the heroine decides not to lose this opportunity and addresses the countess by the name of her ex-fiancé. The pink-haired girl becomes embarrassed by what Baron Zakalian's daughter called her. The girl smiles sweetly and says that she is waiting for an apology, demanding to kneel. The pink-haired girl remembers how she ordered Penelope to do this in the clothing boutique with exactly the same words. Gritting her teeth, the countess kneels. As if distraught, she begins to shout at the main character, saying that it is all her fault. The pink-haired girl begins to laugh even louder, saying that the emperor does not care about her, since she is too mediocre for him. A sword placed at the girl's neck silences her. The countess asks the emperor to order the sword to be removed, but he says that he had already been given a warning earlier. The man covers the blonde with himself and warns that he does not forgive disrespect towards his bride. His majesty also informs the countess that he will not ignore insults concerning himself. The emperor orders his knights to take the criminal away. The girl tries to shout to the silver-haired man, but he does not pay attention to her pleas. The main character smiles victoriously and rejoices that her rival finally got what she deserved. The emperor extends his hand to Penelope, asking if she can be invited to dance. Blonde is embarrassed and says she's not very good at it. The man approaches the girl and takes her by the waist, reassuring her that it doesn't bother him. His Majesty tells Penelope to relax and trust him, as being in his arms is enough for her. The heroine looks into the eyes of the silver-haired man, surprised that the man with whom she mistakenly spent the night turned out to be the Emperor. The blonde's cheeks turn pink, and she feels like there's a fire burning in her heart. The heroes go outside, where Pepe thanks His Majesty for saving him from such a delicate situation. When the silver-haired man hears that the girl is addressing him formally, he tells her to address him as he asked before, Bath. Penelope looks away and asks Bath about his intention to marry her. The emperor takes the girl by the hand and says that he is serious in his words. The man intends to take responsibility for the night spent together, and he will not run away from obligations. Penelope chuckles and says that a wedding is not exactly the right way to be responsible. Bath frowns, not understanding why the blonde wants to refuse him, 
although he is already talking about the engagement in front of a large number of people. The man reproaches the girl for taking advantage of him, and when the situation is resolved, she no longer needs him. Pepe decides to honestly admit that the role of the empress is too burdensome for her. The heroine hesitates, saying that her past relationships were not successful, and for two years she could not decide on anything more than an engagement. Penelope is worried that this situation will repeat itself and that they will gossip about her again on every corner. The girl presses her hands to her chest and says that she just wants to live her quiet, calm life. The fair-haired one says that his majesty also did not help out of love for her. The emperor pronounces the word love with a mysterious intonation. The heroine apologizes and asks to forget about this situation. The man agrees with Pepe and says that's enough for today. The girl sincerely thanks the emperor for his understanding and wishes him happiness. A couple of days later, representatives of His Majesty and Chancellor Oliver come to Penelope. They report that they have come with a formal marriage proposal on behalf of the emperor. Penelope freezes in place, not understanding what is happening. After the proposal was made, everyone in the Zakalian estate was excited, except for the bride herself. Farian shouts happily that the worries have come to an end, and the mother cries, not believing that her daughter is marrying the emperor. The blonde woman rises from her seat, deciding to interrupt her rejoicing relatives. However, the girl does not have time to say anything as Rubia, shocked by the news, bursts into the room. Penelope is surprised how quickly the engagement rumors spread. The red-haired girl admiringly says that His Majesty sent Chancellor Vought himself. With pride in his voice, Brother Pepe reports that this is the absolute truth and shows Ruby the Emperor's seal on an official document. Ferion, forgetting about his hostility towards the red-haired one, jumps with her with happiness that they will soon become the Empress's brother and friend. Penelope turns away from the couple, calling them made for each other. The mother approaches the fair-haired one, making a seemingly sad face. The blonde happily runs to the wife of Baron Zakalian, hoping that at least she understands her feelings. However, the mother enthusiastically takes her daughter by the hands and begins to beg her to get married. The heroine crumples and turns to her father, asking his opinion on this matter. The man was always on his daughter's side, so she looked to him for support. The baron decides not to answer and turns his gaze towards the window, thinking about the weather. The blonde realizes that everyone in this house has a different opinion from her. Penelope falls on her pastel and aggressively hits it with her hands, indignant that the man said one thing, but ended up doing something completely different. The girl remembers the emperor's words and understands that he said that he would calm down only on that day. Pepe screams in irritation, clutching his pillow tightly. The heroine turns her gaze to the chest standing in the corner of the room, realizing that she needs to look for a way out of this situation. The blonde opens the drawer slightly, although she really didn't want to resort to this method. Penelope is forced to take advantage of what has remained untouched for ten years. A meeting is being held in the Imperial Palace about important state issues. The head of the aristocrats, Marquis Genia, claims that it is necessary to reduce the number of officials from the common people, since their level of ignorance has exceeded all norms. The commoner and head of civil servants, Sir Mills, tells the Marquis that the bigger problem is the scandalous rumors about the aristocrats, and especially about the daughter of the head of Genia. The emperor interrupts the leaders, saying that he supports the policy of appointing people from outside the upper class to positions. His majesty addresses the aristocrats, saying that he will not change his position. The man reminds Sir Miles that he is discussing government affairs, so he needs to be careful with his statements. After the meeting, the emperor returns to his office and asks Oliver to leave him alone. Left alone with himself, his majesty reflects on the fact that no matter the people or the aristocrats, Everyone is ready to tear each other apart for their own benefit. The man remembers Penelope's words about luck and thinks that it would be nice if everyone was at least half as modest and tolerant as she is. The emperor sadly realizes that he has not met with her for two days. Silverhaired gives the order to the bird to show the heroine. A bird with soft blue plumage flaps its graceful wing. The man wants to at least just see the girl's face, but the look in which he finds her makes him freeze in place. The emperor orders the bird to widen its view and sees Pepe in a nondescript cape with some kind of bag on his shoulder. His majesty understands that something wrong is happening. The silver-haired man gets up from his seat and quickly runs out of his office. 
When the girl reached the top of the slope along which she was climbing, she had already taken off her cape, finding herself in a white dress. Looking down with confidence, Penelope decides to change her life right now. The blonde closes her eyes as she feels a light breeze blowing towards her. Behind the girl, the cry of the emperor is heard, who runs to Pepe with horror in his eyes. The girl turns around towards the sound, not believing that this is really who she thought about. Bath says that she is taking two drastic measures not to marry him. Penelope sits down on her cape and pulls it over herself. The design resembles a children's sleigh. It dawns on the man that the girl's plans did not include saying goodbye to her life, so he asks what she was up to. Looking awkwardly at the emperor, the fair-haired woman invites him to go for a ride with her. His majesty sits down on the girl's cape, and together they slide down the slope at high speed. After descending, the man finds himself all disheveled and covered in mud. Seeing Bata's tired appearance, Pepe approaches him, asking if he is okay. The emperor raises his hand and, showing his index finger, says that he wants to ride one more time. Taking the cape, the man quickly runs to the top of the mountain. The girl chuckles at this reaction to the descent and thinks that there is something attractive about the emperor. The sun had already begun to set and the heroes had just finished riding, deciding to take a break. Bat runs his hand over the cape and says that he could not even think that it could be used in this way. The man begins to think out loud that if the fabric is slightly transformed, it can be distributed to children from poor families. To this idea, the emperor decides to add to the plan the construction of a slide. Penelope smiles at his majesty's words and says that he is truly a good ruler. The girl gets up from her seat and tries to shake the dirt off her dress, but she doesn't do it well. The man looks attentively at the fair-haired woman without looking away and thinks that he has never felt what he feels for her. Having given up trying to shake off the dirt from her dress, the main character suggests returning. The emperor rises from his seat and approaches Pepe's face. Penelope blushes because she is not yet ready for such close contact with his majesty. However, the man did not have any perverted thoughts and just wanted to remove the fallen leaf. The girl laughs awkwardly and thanks for the help. Bat smiles tenderly and says that he hasn't had so much fun for a long time. Penelope says that she also liked it, and it was the first time she was not riding alone. The emperor suggests spending time like this every day after the wedding. The heroine is surprised how Bat so deftly moved on to the topic of marriage. Blonde asks his majesty if he has ever been refused. Penelope says the man formally proposed to her because he was afraid he would be rejected. The emperor tells Pepe that she was the one who told him to hold him accountable for his actions. Bat asks the blonde why she doesn't want to marry him, whether it's because she doesn't want to be an empress or she doesn't like him. These words make the heroine's pulse quicken and her heart seems to burst out of her chest. Penelope averts her gaze and tells the man that being an empress is too burdensome and she wants to live an ordinary life. His majesty clarifies to the girl that life is ordinary for her, to which she says that it is dating someone with whom she falls in love. The emperor takes the blonde's hand, inviting her to start dating for real. The silver-haired man gently kisses his hands, saying that this is instead of a kiss on the lips. After this, the man leaves, asking him to think about his proposal again. When the girl realizes that she again could not cancel the wedding, she shouts to Batu to listen to her, but he does not stop and leaves. The emperor is sitting in his bathroom, deep in thought about something. The emperor remembers how he reminded the blonde of the words about responsibility that he said then on the hill. Sighing heavily, the silver-haired man realizes that the girl really doesn't remember anything. That night, the girl fell asleep due to the large amount of alcohol she drank right in the man's arms. However, at some point she came to her senses and began to hit the emperor in the face, talking about those people who point the finger at her at the ball. Penelope began to cry bitterly, saying that she was very lonely and would like someone to be on her side. His majesty could not calmly look at this state of the heroine, and therefore said that he would be next to her. The man said that he would take care of her and protect her so that she would not be sad and lonely. The fair-haired girl no longer heard these words, as she again plunged into the kingdom of Morpheus. The emperor was able to walk with Pepe to the bench and sit him down on it. The heroine did not feel any changes in space and still slept soundly. Bath only wanted to look at Penelope, but he was glad that they were in this position then. However, the peaceful atmosphere was destroyed the moment the fair-haired woman became ill. His majesty understood what was about to happen, but he could not hide from the disaster.
The man coming out of the bath looked at the bed in which the girl was lying and realized that this was not part of his plans. Penelope slept peacefully in the emperor's bed without even taking off her mask and dress. But at some point, Pepe jumps up sharply, thereby frightening the emperor. The blonde feels an unbearable heat due to being in clothes under the blanket. The man immediately looks away, embarrassed by the girl's appearance. The heroine takes off all her clothes and finally feels the desired coolness. The emperor blushes even more, not understanding how one can behave this way while sleeping. After her actions, Penelope falls asleep again. His majesty carefully sits down on the bed so as not to wake the baron's drunken daughter. Silver-haired sighs and says that Pepe sleeps peacefully without even knowing how he feels. Although the man initially planned to sleep on the sofa, he still decides to lie down next to the fair-haired woman. The emperor says that in this way he wants to punish the heroine for seducing him. The blonde one turns over to face his majesty and barely audibly mutters the word responsibility. Bat chuckles at Penelope's sweet expression and tells her not to worry, because he will definitely bear responsibility. Closing his eyes, the silver-haired man feels his heart beating faster and faster and his soul becomes calmer. As a result, the heroes turn to each other and fall asleep together. A bright ray of sun wakes a man from sleep. The emperor is surprised to realize that for the first time in ten years, he was able to sleep without sleeping pills. Silver-haired thinks that he slept so soundly and peacefully because Penelope was nearby. Looking at the place where Pepe had been lying before, he finds no one. Smiling tenderly, his majesty contemplates whether to praise or punish her when he catches Penelope. Bat puts on a white robe, covering the dragon located on his back. The emperor decides to win Pepe's heart because he feels that he needs her. A girl with hair as black as night appears behind the silver-haired man. His majesty turns around and asks the stranger what she is doing here. The girl apologizes for her concern and her tactlessness to the emperor, looking at him with loving eyes. Bat warns the girl that she was ordered not to appear in his chambers. The black-haired woman awkwardly says that she needs to get a response to the letter with the official wedding proposal sent to the man three months ago. With irritation in his voice, the emperor orders her to leave immediately. The black-haired woman asks his majesty to give his consent quickly, since everything in Turan is already ready for the ceremony. Silver hair reminds Princess Jewel that she is a hostage from a defeated country. Jewel's face darkens when she hears that someone like her will never achieve the status of empress. The princess gets angry, saying that compared to the daughter of a simple baron, she is more suitable for the role of empress. Bat interrupts the girl and warns her not to dare insult his woman. Jewel approaches his majesty from behind and hugs him. Bat is angered by such willful actions of the black-haired woman, so she immediately pushes her away. The princess falls to her knees and says with tears in her eyes that she loves the emperor. The man says that Jewel's love is disgusting to him, because she does such things while being a hostage who surrendered voluntarily. His majesty heads towards the doors, telling the girl to leave. The princess begins to cry even more, begging not to leave her, because she has been waiting for Bat for ten years just for him. For the last time, the emperor turns to the black-haired woman and says that he has never seen her as a woman. After which the man leaves his chambers and, with a loud sound, slams the door in front of the princess. The girl walks along the corridors, leaning against the walls to stay on her feet, and grieves over her love for his majesty. A maid stands in front of the princess near the nightlights and turns them on. Seeing her highness, the maid bows down to greet her. Jewel looks at the girl with her predatory gaze, and strong anger is displayed in her eyes. The black-haired girl suddenly hits the maid on the cheek with all her might. After the blow, the princess grabs the maid's hair, pulling it over herself. Her highness is convinced that the girl was spying on her, although she says otherwise. After giving the maid a couple more slaps, the princess finally leaves. The black-haired girl thinks that if Bat decided to leave her, then she will get him in another way. At Baron Zakalian's estate, Rubia admires the emperor's words that he wants to become true lovers with the blonde. At this time, a dejected Penelope is lying on the bed who is not at all happy about his majesty's romanticism. The friend tries to reassure Pepe, saying that the emperor can be reciprocated, since he shows an active interest in her direction. The heroine says that she wants to live a calm life without worries and worries. Rubia calls the girl's words stupid, since some are ready to die for the opportunity to see even a corner of the emperor's eye. The blonde sits up and asks her friend if his majesty is really that popular. The red-haired woman responds positively, 
since the man is young and handsome and occupies the highest position in society. Rubia is sure that not a single girl from a noble family will refuse a place in the heart of the silver-haired man. Penelope gets angry, saying that she shouldn't marry just because of the ruler's cute face. A friend says that in addition to his good appearance, the emperor is the most outstanding magician of the state. Pepe is surprised that a man has such abilities. Rubia suggests that the girl at least sometimes be interested in the outside world, since everyone knows about the ruler's magic. Penelope is embarrassed that she did not know such a basic thing. Remembering his majesty, the fair-haired one does not understand why such an ideal person needs her. The red-haired girl distracts her friend from her thoughts, asking her if she really doesn't want to be an empress. The heroine says that thinking about this makes her heart ache and she doesn't even want to eat. Rubia offers to clarify the situation by asking the girl if she wants to be an empress or if she doesn't like the emperor. Penelope remembers that I asked Bath exactly the same question, causing her cheeks to turn red. The baron's daughter turns her head to the side and says that she does not want to waste her time on this wedding. The girl again remembers the man's words that she just needs to relax and trust. Rubia says she's jealous of her friend because Farian immediately starts running away when she appears. The red-haired girl gloomily reflects that she will have to remain an old maid if this continues. However, the next moment Rubia's mood changes and she decides to try to meet another man. Penelope looks at her friend's mood swings in surprise. The girl says that it was enough for her to spend five years on her brother Pepe, and she is tired of suffering because of unrequited love. Rubia nudges the blonde in a friendly manner, joking that maybe she too can find a man as wonderful as the heroine. Penelope is both angry and blushing because of the girl's words, so she asks her to calm down. The red-haired girl grabs her friend's hand and asks her for help. Pepe asks in bewilderment how she can help such people. However, instead of answering, Rubia smiles mysteriously. All this time, Ferion stood outside the door, eavesdropping on the girl's conversation. He stands in complete shock because he heard that the red-haired woman is going to find a new man. The guy remembers how Rubia recently said that she only likes him. Ferion decides not to let this happen and prevent it by any means. Hearing that Penelope and her friend are about to leave the room, the young man hides behind a huge vase. The red-haired girl hurriedly takes Pepe, saying that they are going to the butterfly ball. Blonde doesn't understand what the girl is talking about, but she asks her to trust. Farian calls the girl's mangy moths flying towards the fire and decides to follow them. The emperor sits in his office and looks through some documents, but his thoughts are occupied with something completely different. The man puts down the paper and reflects on the fact that he has no idea how to be true lovers. Duke Oliver, seeing the ruler's confusion, asks what is bothering him. His majesty says he wants to ask something about love affairs. Smiling widely, the chancellor clarifies whether this concerns Lady Zakalian. The emperor, with a serious look, asks what it means to be true lovers. Oliver, hearing the ruler's question, begins to laugh sweetly. Having finished having fun, the man says that you need to spend all your free time together, regardless of external conditions and other circumstances. The chancellor explains that you need to meet in atmospheric places or try gourmet dishes. With sadness in his voice, his majesty says that he thinks only in military tactics and laws. Oliver sighs, knowing that this is going to be really difficult for Bath. The man had to participate in the war immediately after ascending the throne, and after that, for ten years, he took care of maintaining peace in the country. The chancellor decides to help the emperor in love places and offers to visit Cupid Park. The park is the most beautiful place for dates, where you can see incredibly beautiful landscapes at certain times. Bath is inspired and says that he will definitely visit him. Oliver suggests booking a place in a good restaurant, which is located not far from this park. Full of confidence, the silver-haired man hits the table and decides to immediately ask Penelope out on a date. The man orders the bird to show where the girl is now. Pepe appears in front of the heroes, dressed in an elegant peach-colored dress. The emperor blushes at the fair-haired beauty, and Oliver is horrified by what he sees. The girls climb the stairs and head into the heart-shaped arch. The ruler gloomily asks the chancellor if he knows what this place is. The man awkwardly says that this is a place where guys and girls usually look for dates. It's as if thunder strikes his majesty and horror runs through his entire body. The emperor is already imagining how a stranger and a blonde girl happily go for a romantic walk. Bath menacingly asks the chancellor where this meeting place is. The man puts on a less attention-grabbing outfit, complimenting it with a hat. 
Silverhair doesn't understand why Penelope came here because is he really so unpleasant to her? His majesty shudders when he hears someone nearby loudly angry that the girl has gone to look for a new man. Ferion squats behind a tree, cursing this suspicious place. The guy understands that if he goes alone, it will be too suspicious. The young man accidentally turns his head to the side and sees a man standing there wearing a hat. Ferion flinches when it dawns on him who the silver-haired man is. The emperor, in turn, notices the great similarity between this guy and Pepe. The young man approaches Batu and asks him if he is the ruler of the state of Labada, to which he is nodded positively. The men shake hands without further ado. The girls are sitting in a restaurant at the same table with some guys. One of them asks why such beautiful ladies don't have gentlemen. Another seduces Rubia, saying that their meeting was destined. The girl's heart skips a beat, and her cheeks begin to burn with embarrassment. Penelope does not share her friend's reaction, as she feels creeped out by such sappy talk. The blonde girl drinks a drink from a glass, thinking that the guys are too following them. A man with yellow hair asks Rubia if her friend is always so taciturn. The guy approaches Pepe, asking her face not to be so cold. The yellow-haired man winks at the girl, takes her hand, and begins to beg her to show her wonderful smile. Penelope snatches her hand away in irritation. The guy freezes in shock, not understanding why the blonde girl is acting so detached. Rubia makes excuses for her friend, saying that she is just a little shy. The men smile knowingly and leave to buy something to drink. Farian and his majesty are watching all this from the side. Penelope's brother turns to the emperor, offering to follow the guys. Men go out into the street and start discussing the girls that they are dressed like old theater actresses, and these outfits do not help them hide their age. Silverhaired is angry when he hears how they speak about his beloved. The emperor is about to walk towards the guys, but Farian stops him, asking him to cool down. However, the next moment, when the men decide to rob wealthy ladies, Brother Pepe can no longer stand it, but his majesty stops him. The guy with glasses says that he likes the red-haired girl because he looks like she is ready to give him everything he wants. The second one says that he takes on the one in the peach dress because he likes arrogant women. The men decide to place bets on who will be the fastest to ask a girl out on a date. However, their fun is interrupted by unexpected guests. Farian calls the guys pests, and the emperor suggests urgently taking preventive measures to eliminate them. Visitors to the establishment retreat from strangers not understanding what is happening. Rubia asks her friend why she was acting so strange, since the situation was too awkward. Blonde gets angry and says that she couldn't do nothing when that guy grabbed her hand. The redhead sighs, saying how a girl as vulnerable as Penelope could have a one-night stand. Pepe yells at Rubia not to talk so loudly about such things. The heroine says that those men are like those who bully women behind their backs. The red-haired girl calmly agrees with the girl's statement. Ruby admiringly says that Penelope is dating the perfect man, so no one else can get into her soul. The Baron's daughter thinks about the red-haired woman's words, realizing that she was never against the Emperor's touch. The heroine decides to quickly leave this place, but Rubia asks her to stay so that she can get herself a man. The blonde girl gives up and agrees to stay, but only for an hour, after which she will go home herself. Suddenly, someone's barely audible scream is heard, but the red-haired woman manages to hear it. Ruby asks her friend if she heard anything, but gets a negative answer. The burgundy curtain opens slightly, and someone comes into the room. Smiling friendly, the girl invites the guests to sit down, and the fair-haired one, in turn, turns away from those who have entered. Ferion adjusts his glasses and apologizes for keeping the beautiful ladies waiting. Hearing a familiar voice, Penelope turns to the guests in surprise. The emperor and the heroine's brother stand impressively in front of the entrance, and the clothes of the guys who recently came out are draped over their shoulders. Both girls freeze in shock in their places, not daring to move. With his arms crossed in front of his chest, his majesty looks menacingly at Penelope. Still in shock, the girl asks the man what he is doing here. Bat doesn't say a word and silently takes the blonde's hand, wanting to quickly get her out of this place. Rubia asks Ferion in surprise what he is doing here. The guy sits down on the sofa, scolding her that the girl brought the future empress to such a place. Red-haired is upset and says that she just wanted to have a good relationship and Pepe wanted to help her with it. The young man shouts at Ruby why she wanted to do this. Farian warns the redhead that this place is crawling with bad guys and she could end up in trouble like she is now. The girl is surprised by the guy's words, not understanding what he is talking about. 
the young man decides to hide the truth about those men, saying that it is simply dangerous for her to be in such places. Rubia blushes at his words, realizing that he cares about her. The red-haired woman clutches her dress, angry that Farian still makes her heart flutter. The girl quietly says that the blonde should not care. The next moment, Ruby is already screaming at him that it is none of his business who she dates. The guy shouts to her in the same tone that he cares about this. Realizing what he just said, Farian covers his mouth with his hand. The red-haired girl asks what the guy means. The guy makes the excuse that Ruby is his sister's friend, so she will be very upset if something happens to the girl. The girl looks at the embarrassed young man, not believing her happiness that he really cares about her. An awkward silence ensues, and no one can break it, as everyone experiences a bouquet of different emotions. Farian is the first to break the silence, addressing the red-haired woman. However, the guy does not have time to say anything, as the waiter arrives bringing a bottle of pink sparkling wine. Out of surprise, the young man jumps up in fear and asks to put the bottle on the table. The waiter leaves the drink and leaves, wishing you a pleasant evening. The blonde man begins to open the bottle, suggesting that he drink first and then leave. The man pours wine into their glasses and says a toast to the red-haired woman's health. Ruby blushes and asks herself why she can't let this guy go. After drinking a little, Rubia begins to wonder where the two men who were sitting with them went. The girl decides that it simply wasn't on the way with them. That's why they disappeared, but she will never receive the true answer. However, the red-haired girl looks at Farian's glasses and says that they look familiar. At this time, the emperor and the baron's daughter are walking along a night street illuminated by lanterns. Penelope feels awkward that they've been holding hands for so long, so she asks him to let her go. The man is angry because of the girl's request, so he turns around to face her. His majesty says that he cannot believe that a girl like Pepe could go to such a place. Blonde apologizes to Bath and says she's sorry. The emperor tells the girl that he was very angry when he went to look for her. Bath takes Penelope's hand and asks her if she is so disgusted by the thought of marrying him that she is ready to go to such places. The heroine does not have time to answer, as the silver-haired man decides to ask another question about whether she hates him. The fair-haired girl is speechless from the sad look of the emperor. Pepe removes his hand from the man's, answering that he doesn't know the answer. The baron's daughter sincerely admits that she is afraid. His majesty asks the girl if this is connected with the prospect of becoming an empress. The girl leaves the emperor, saying that the problem is in the marriage itself. The man asks what she means by that. Memories of Gordon flash through the blonde's thoughts, and Penelope says that she is afraid that his majesty will change. Pepe sighs, not understanding why the emperor went so far because she is from the family of a simple baron. It is because of this that the heroine is puzzled by the idea of becoming an empress. The blonde decides to clarify one more question about whether their meeting that night was the first. The man says that he met Penelope before, but she apparently does not remember this. The heroine is very surprised because she did not expect to receive such an answer. Bat approaches Pepe and says that if she is curious to know more, he will tell her in Cupid Park at seven in the evening in two days. The girl is first amazed, and then blushes with the realization that the emperor is inviting her on a date. With his cheeks burning, his majesty extends his hand forward and asks the blonde if she accepts his invitation. As if enchanted, Penelope offers her hand to the man, agreeing to a date. The next day, Rubia comes to the main character, reporting that she and her brother drank sparkling wine alone. Inspired by happiness, the red-haired girl covers her cheeks in embarrassment, saying that Farian even walked her home. Out of overwhelming emotion, Ruby slams her fist on the table, screaming that her brother is a blonde, amazing man. Pepe remembers that on that day the emperor came with Farion. Suddenly, the heroine has one strange thought for her, that her brother likes the red-haired one. Rubia asks her friend if his majesty did something bad yesterday. The girl worriedly says that he looked very angry that day, and now she is afraid that Penelope got hurt because of her. Pepe looks away and blushes, saying that everything ended very well. The blonde girl gathers her courage and admits that the emperor invited her on a date. The red-haired girl is amazed at her friend's words and begins to bombard her with questions, and the heroine answers everything honestly. Penelope is angry with herself for agreeing to this meeting. Ruby chuckles at her friend, saying that she definitely wouldn't agree to the date if the man were a bad person. Realizing that she herself wanted to go to Cupid Park makes Pepe blush. The red-haired girl sighs, 
saying that she is jealous of her friend and now wants Farian to invite her there. Penelope invites Rubia to go to the park with them, but the girl does not understand why she should interfere with someone's date. The blonde reveals a plan in which she will bring her brother with her, and Ruby will pretend that she knew nothing about the date. The red-haired girl sincerely hugs her friend, thanking her for her help. At this moment, Pepe thinks that she is already starting to worry a lot, because this is her first date. The emperor, sitting in his office, leafs through a magazine with necklaces. The man approaches Oliver, asking him what he thinks about such a date gift. His majesty points to a spread depicting a luxurious necklace with emerald butterflies. The chancellor tells the ruler that when choosing gifts, you need to pay attention to more than just cost. By putting on the glasses, Oliver seems to become a teacher in matters of love, saying that it is important to take into account the atmosphere. The emperor looks at the duke in bewilderment. The chancellor says that by using place, time, and situation, you can create the most romantic atmosphere. Bath asks him if he really needs some precious gift, to which Oliver shakes his head negatively. The Duke asks His Majesty to imagine a park where couples whisper about love under the light of lanterns. Under this light, the girl will look even more beautiful than usual. And so, when the man begins to feel excited, he takes out a simple box. Oliver explains that on a first date, expensive gifts can put pressure on a person. His Majesty remembers Penelope's words that she wants to live like an ordinary person, and says that preparing for a date is difficult. At this moment, a servant enters the emperor's office, bringing tea on a tray. The silver-haired man orders the servant to stop since he did not ask to bring it. The man apologizes for this and says that he will take it away right away. Bat looks attentively at the leaving servant. Society ladies sit at a tea party and discuss the current trend among the nobility to marry for love. One of the girls grins, remembering how people behave obscenely on the streets now. However, the second tea party participant with light brown hair says there is nothing wrong with it because she married because of her family when she was young. The girl in the green dress continues to insist on her opinion, saying that this way the aristocrats will lose their pride. The ladies decide to get the princess's opinion on this trend. The black-haired girl says that if it's fashionable now, then they just need to accept and acknowledge it. But she is not going to lose her pride just because of a fashion trend. The nobles agree with Princess Jewel's words, praising her for her open-mindedness. The ladies say goodbye to the girl, to which she waves goodbye in a friendly manner. The next moment, Jewel makes a face and thinks about what vulgar thoughts the tea party participants have. The princess irritably reflects that she will no longer invite the countess, since she agrees that she should marry for love. Someone knocks on the door of the room where the black-haired woman is now. The man who recently brought tea to the emperor comes into the room to inform the princess that Bath is going to Cupid Park tomorrow. The girl, hearing this news, is very surprised. Jewel says she has accepted the information and her servant can go. The princess thinks irritably about the blonde, not understanding how she was able to force the emperor to break off their three-year engagement. However, the girl calms down because a bright thought comes to her. Her Highness orders the maid to go to the Marquis Genove and tell her that she urgently needs someone. Jewel also says to spread rumors about the misdeeds of the young noblewoman. The princess smiles ominously, saying that she will show the true face of the woman whom the emperor considered noble. The black-haired woman grins, imagining his majesty's face when his eyes are opened to the truth. The main character looks in the mirror, having finished getting ready for a meeting with Bath. The girl's cheeks never stop burning because the girl is very nervous about her first date. Penelope tries to calm herself down, saying that they will just take a walk together and she will finally find out where the man first met her. Memories return again to the day when His Majesty extended his arms to Pepe, inviting him on a date. These thoughts make the girl feel like she is going crazy. Someone calls out to the blonde one, asking if she's ready. Ferion asks his sister why she wants him to go with her, because she usually does it on her own. However, the guy finds the answer for himself, saying that the girl needs to be careful, because she will soon become an empress, and her older brother will be able to protect her. Before leaving the room, Penelope remembers a happy Rubia, and wonders if she has already left or not. Pepe hurries Ferion, saying that they should not be late. Suddenly, the blonde hears a strange sound coming from somewhere behind her. A creature jumps on top of the girl. Out of surprise, the Baron's daughter falls to the ground, and Farian is already hurrying toward her sister from behind. 
The guy looks in surprise at the attacking animal, which turns out to be a simple puppy. Penelope takes the dog in her arms and asks her brother to keep him. The young man says that he doesn't mind, but the problem is Pepe's appearance. The skirt of the girl's dress became very dirty after she fell to the ground. The fair-haired girl understands that if she goes to change clothes now, she will still make it to the emperor. However, Penelope will not have enough time to meet Ruby. Pepe realizes that then the brother and the red-haired woman will not be able to cross paths. The heroine comes up with a bright idea of what to do in this situation. The girl turns to Farian and asks him to go first to inform the emperor that she will be a little late. The guy offers to just go and quickly change clothes, assuring that his majesty will take this calmly. Pepe swears at his brother, asking him how he dares to keep the ruler of their state waiting. After this, the girl screams loudly throughout the street, turning to people to look at this shameless man. With difficulty, Farian agrees with his sister and goes to the meeting place, which is appointed near the central fountain. The heroine sighs with relief, realizing that her plan can still be implemented. Penelope walks down the hallway of the estate, thinking that it's been a long time since she put on this outfit. The puppy begins to whine because he senses the girl's upset state. Pepe carefully watches the dog's reaction to its mood. The main character gently strokes the puppy's head, asking him not to jump on her like that again. Finally, the blonde meets the maid in the corridor and stops her. Penelope holds the puppy forward and asks the maid to bathe and feed him. Having handed the dog into safe hands, the girl quickly runs away to change clothes. Rubia, dressed in an elegant dress, looks at the time, realizing that it is time for her to go. While the girl heads to the meeting, she remembers how on the day she came of age, she met Ferion. Then the young man was the first to invite the red-haired girl to dance, which is why he fell into her heart. However, after that, the guy began to avoid her. The girl does not despair because now Ferion has changed a lot for the better. The redhead smiles happily, anticipating how she will properly express her feelings today. The smile disappears from Ruby's face when she notices someone. A guy with a crooked grin approaches a girl planning something evil. A dissatisfied Ferion walks along the evening street, complaining that he is not an errand boy. However, the anger quickly passes as the guy remembers that he is still the brother of the future empress. Inspired again, the young man begins to look around in search of the emperor. On the opposite side of the central fountain, the blonde man notices Rubia. The guy gets scared and decides that he needs to leave quickly before she notices him. But Farian stops because he notices a man standing next to the red-haired woman. Covering his face with his hand, the blonde man peeks out to take a closer look at the couple. Suddenly, a man standing next to Rubia grabs her arm tightly. The stranger begins to take the girl away against her will. Seeing that the red-haired girl is in danger, Farian takes off. Princess Jewel and the same stranger are sitting in a dimly lit living room. The black-haired woman throws some kind of bag on the table, calling it payment. The man asks the customer what his job is. The girl takes out a luminous leaf from her cape and places it on the table. A hologram of two girls appears from the paper, one of whom turns out to be Rubia. The princess reports that the red-haired one will be in a designated place and will need to be detained until his majesty arrives. The man asks the black-haired woman if he can do whatever he wants with this woman. Jewel says she doesn't care and the guy can do whatever he wants. The stranger with a grin on his face holds the bag with the payment in his hands, already anticipating how he will entertain the emperor's bride. A man approaches the redhead in the park and asks her if she is here alone, but Ruby says that she is waiting for someone. The girl removes the stranger's hand from her shoulder, asking him to leave her alone. The guy gets annoyed by the red-haired girl's behavior and grabs her hand. Looking menacingly into Ruby's eyes, the man repeats that he will stand with her. The girl trembles at the stranger's gaze, and tears appear in her eyes. The man squeezes the red-haired woman's hand even tighter, asking her that since she seduced the emperor, then she can do anything. However, the next moment, Rubia finds herself free from the grip. Her savior stands before the girl who has fallen to her knees. Farian turns to the red-haired girl and tells her to jump on his back so that people don't think anything bad. Still not moving away from what happened, the girl, with tears in her eyes, climbs onto the embarrassed guy. The blonde man and Rubia quickly move away from the central fountain, attracting interested glances. The redhead finally exhales and relaxes, thinking that Farian's body is soothingly warm.